Hello everyone. So this is your professor once again, Danny Kabulay, and we're now in the home stretch, the last video or the fifth video for week number five. So we will be talking about the recruitment and selection budget. What is a recruitment and selection budget? Okay, this is basically a management tool which is part of the larger HR budget which provides a working estimate of the cost and expenses that may be incurred for a recruitment campaign. The amount may vary and can also depend on how liberal or open management is when it comes to recruiting talents. The personnel officer or recruitment officer is in charge of preparing the recruitment and selection budget to be reviewed by the HR manager and approved by top management. The budget usually details the recruitment and selection activities or techniques and the various expenses related to those activities. The budget may be approved or streamlined, meaning pag approved, walang changes. Pag streamlined, that means tatapyasan, may babawasan, or mayroong babaguhin. Okay? So that means uh, it's not the original budget. It's modified. So when budget is streamlined, that's what's going to happen. Now, who prepares this budget? It's the personnel officer or the recruitment officer. Now, what are the steps in preparing the budget? First, identify the manpower needed for the year. Like, you know, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter, you have to make an estimate of how many people will you need to hire okay in various positions that will become vacant so this is a function of forecasting then indicate the periods additional manpower need to be hired like kailan ka mag hire ng mga supervisors kailan ka mag hire ng managers okay is it gonna be on the first quarter or the third quarter and so on and so forth that is very important so you can program your advertisements kailan mo ilalabas yung mga advertisements because you need time to uh, receive applications and then additional time to screen them and to select no, the most appropriate candidate. So then you have to identify the periods wherein recruitment is launched. So kailang ka magre-recruit ng mga, for example, security guards or managers or department heads, etc., etc. Will you be hiring on the third quarter? So you have to program that then you have to enumerate and assess the cost associated with the recruitment and selection activities. Gusto mo bang sumali sa job fair ng dole? Okay, magre-renta ka ng booth, there is a registration fee, you have to decorate the booth, you have to get uh, volunteers to man the booth, to distribute flyers, to receive application forms also. You have to print out, you have to print uh, the forms that will be filled out by the applicants, and so on and so forth. So all these expenses need to be footed. No? You need to uh, put a, an amount for what you will be spending. Okay. Then, after all the amounts have been plugged in and you total them, then you have to add a buffer. A buffer is what you call an allowance. So it could range from 5% to 10% contingency. So it serves as a contingency to the original budget. So in this particular format that I'm showing you in the PowerPoint, I, you will notice that for recruitment, I chose to use only two techniques, campus job fair, which will be done twice a year, and social media campaign, which will be whole year round. So what are the typical expenses in a campus job fair? The registration fee. So sometimes they will charge 10000 per booth, okay, if it's going to be held twice a year, then you have to, you know, estimate or earmark 20000 for it. 10000 times twice. And then uh, the cost of the booth exhibit, the materials that you will use to build the booth. So let us say one booth is roughly about 21,000 pesos, the materials to be used, and you're going to do that, you're going to do two different booths, uh, the first half of the year and then the second half of the year so you would have a total of 42 pesos for 
the cost of the booth exhibit. Siyempre, pagagandahin mo siya. Tatawag ka ng mga karpintero para gawin siya. Okay? Then, the meals of the booth ushers. Yung mga tumatao sa booth ninyo. Ang tawag doon, mga receptionists, mga ushers. They are going to be answering questions from the applicants. They will be distributing application forms. They will be collating and so on and so forth. So, siyempre kakain sila, no? Kung whole day yung exhibit, bibigyan mo sila ng tatlong meals. Merienda in the morning, lunch, and then merienda in the afternoon. So, roughly about 2,400 pesos. And then the salaries of the booth ushers, may sweldo sila. Or at the very least, an allowance for transportation. And then, posters, brochures, and forms. You have to make an estimate how much will it cost and then, incentives and prices. So, magbibigay ka ng mga giveaways sa mga bibisita sa booth ninyo. Okay? And then, uh, transportation allowances for the staff. Okay? So, that's a total of 124000 Then, for social media campaign, you have to give an honorarium to the social media specialist. So, maybe uh, this will be about... Uh, uh, six times during the year so you have to program so each time that the social media specialist will come up with a content and recruitment ad for example for posting maybe that will you can pay this person five to ten thousand pesos and then the boosting fee you have to boost those ads no about twelve thousand for the whole year so your total recruitment expenses would total one hundred sixty six thousand and five hundred pesos then, let's proceed now to our selection activities. So, this time, I chose two, three activities, CV scanning or CV critiquing, panel interviews, and then trade test. So, how much will you spend for CV scanning for the supplies, the allowance of the practicumers who will be helping out in scanning the CVs? So, that's a total of 5,000 pesos. For the panel interviews, you have to you know, earmark money for the supplies, the forms to be used, and then the meals of the panel interviewers. So you could have several panels if you like, okay? And you will be doing this maybe quarterly or four times a year. So for the panel interviews, you might, you could earmark uh, somewhere between, you know, 25 and 26,000. Here I chose 25, I calculated 25,000 and 200 pesos. And then finally, I, I, will, I would want to implement a trade test. No? So the trade test would entail supplies and materials, and then the meals and honoraria of the evaluators. So that's a total of 18,000 pesos. So therefore, for the total selection process expenses, you would fork out, you need to budget 48,200. So the total now of recruitment and selection expenses would be 214,700. But as I said, it's a good practice to do a buffer. Here I chose to use a 10% buffer. So you add 10% of 214,700. So now that's a total, grand total of 236,170 pesos. That's now your recruitment and selection budget for the year. Okay? for this medium-sized company. So, if you have any questions, please ask. Don't hesitate to ask in the comment section below. So, there is such a thing as what you call supplemental budget. Sometimes, the HR managers do not really make good estimate with uh, estimates with the budget. It is either too tight or excessive. So, what can they do, no? When a manager believes that the budget he prepared is deemed not sufficient, the budget may be adjusted by requesting for a supplemental budget. A supplemental budget is an additional amount uh, requested from top management because the original budget was not sufficient. That's what you mean by a supplemental budget. Now, for example, it was originally estimated that the job fair booth would only cost 50000 But it was anticipated that due to, the, due to inflation and shortage of materials, it was bound to increase to 80,000 pesos. Okay? Therefore, 
the HR manager should request for a supplemental budget of 30,000 pesos for the difference, the additional amount required, okay? So that's what you mean by supplemental budget. Now, what are the tips on how to streamline the budget? Okay, number one, be resourceful, creative, and innov innovative. Number two, be cost conscious. Number three, establish good relationship with suppliers. Number four, focus on essentials only. Huwag kang magpasok ng mga kung ano nung items that are not important or not necessary. Number five, use zero-based budgeting. That means yung hihilingin mo lang sa top management, yung kailangan, yung hindi kailangan. Hindi po kay gumastos ka ng ganyang bagay last year, doesn't mean that you will spend again this year. Maybe you will spend differently this year. Okay? Zero-based budgeting. Kung ano lang yung kailangan, yun yung ating nire-request. And then there's also another tip that you need to provide a buffer. Kasi you'll never know, no? Baka sumipa ang prices, tapos you are caught off guard. And finally, get someone to review your budget. Kasi para magkaroon ng second opinion. So that's one way of checking your work also. Because it's difficult when you check your own work eh. Baka, para wala ka nakikita. Pero pag ibang tao ang tumingin, they will have a different perspective. And that is very important. Okay? Now, here's the ethical question I want you to answer for video number 5. Many HR managers are not good in budget preparation. Hindi sila magaling sa accounting. This is an important competency. However, what can HR managers do to address this weakness? Choose one letter only. Ha? So this is multiple choice. There is a correct and definite answer. A. Request the chief accountant of the company to prepare their HR budget. So, yung, yung chief accountant na lang ang gagawa ng HR budget, total siya naman ang magaling sa budgeting. B, look up sample HR budgets online and simply use them as patterns. So, kopyahin mo na lang yung nakikita mo sa internet. Okay na yon. C, take up online courses on how to prepare an HR budget. Yeah, may mga available courses online. Kung type mo, mag-enroll ka online para matuto ka. And then finally, D, collaborate with the team and divide the work so every employee in the HR department has a part in the budget preparation. So you just, you know, distribute the work to your employees. Kasi kung ikaw lahat ang gagawa, you know, matuturete ka. So is D the correct answer? Okay. So you have to type your answers in the comment section. If it's A, B, C, or D. Since this is the final video, I expect that you will answer this, okay? And here is your take-home quiz number five, SOC Media Recruiting. Journey was one of the most successful American rock bands in history. However, sometime in the 1990s, they disbanded because lead singer Steve Perry left the band. The remaining band members continuously searched for a replacement for Steve. After a long search, they found an unknown Filipino singer through his videos on YouTube. He is Arnel Pineda, and the rest is history. Journey was reborn. Watch the documentary that I shared with you in the chat group. Do nila na recruit, ganung paraan nila na recruit si Arnel Pineda using social media. Okay, this brings us now to quiz number five. Many companies use social media in recruiting applicants. Through crowdsourcing, that's the term used, crowdsourcing posts, they are able to attract many applicants and eventually hire the right candidate. Crowdsourcing is social media term which means I need help or help needed. Here are the questions now. What are the advantages of crowdsourcing in Facebook? And the second question is the opposite. What are the disadvantage, advantages, rather? Okay, answer these two questions in the um, comment section below. Or, sorry, this is your take-home quiz. You have to submit this 
on a uh, electronic format, word format rather. Sorry, you, you're not submit, you're not answering this in the comment section, but you are submitting this through a word format electronic document. So you submit to me, and the deadline will be next week. Okay, you have to submit this within one week. Now, <clears throat> recruitment advertisement critique. You have to critique this advertisement of Park Inn. This will be in your e-portfolio task number five. Okay, nakita niyo yung advertisement by Park Inn. We are looking for you, vacancies, executive sous chef. I want you to criticize. What's wrong with this ad? There are a lot of things wrong with the ad. So please enumerate what's wrong with the ad. But you have to refer to slide number 23 of our video of our week number three series, okay? Slide 23 of, slide 23 of the PowerPoint of uh, week three. So you go back to that PowerPoint presentation, go to slide 23, why? Because it enumerates the attributes of a good recruitment advertisement. Doon yung makikita ano yung magandang katangian ng isang recruitment advertisement. Tignan mo kung this advertisement has them all. Okay? So I want you to discuss that and enumerate the weaknesses of this advertisement. Okay? So the deadline for this will be April 11 also. Okay? You can submit this later. Now, I will see you in the next video lecture next week. Stay tuned for five more videos for week number six. Remember, may your week be filled with positive energy. Because if you feel positive, then the whole week is going to be happy. Start the week with happiness, joy, and peace. Stay safe and stay healthy. Goodbye.